welcome to your weekly podcast from Freestyle Media. Um, I've been in partnership with the Magic 5 for a few months now, um, and they are really good. Uh, I wear a pair of their goggles, uh, and they fit just nicely uh, because they're designed to fit your face after you take a 360 scan of their app. Um, do consider getting yourself a pair uh, if you wish to do so, and you can use my affiliate link. Uh, that will get you 15% off, um, and I'll also benefit from it too. So uh, so a win-win from, uh, from both sides. Uh, that's the magic5.com forward slash freestyle media limited. Uh, and I will put the link in the description to this episode. Uh, so the world champs then, uh, not the pros, we don't care about them. Uh, it's all about the world masters championships taking place in Japan uh, across three cities. Uh, but Fukuoka is the place for the swimming and the open water swimming. Um, it's 10 days long. The event in total kicks off on the 2nd of August, finishes on the 11th. Uh, and I am joined by, well, three swimmers who are heading out there shortly, hopefully a fourth soon during this call. Um, it's the brilliant Kaf Tunnicliffe, uh, Rebecca <laughs> Lennon uh, and Kyoko Nash. Um, so thank you guys for joining. Ken Flett hopefully can join us at some point. Uh, he's got a, a little work issue, but hopefully he'll be able to jump on at some point. Uh, but thanks all, all for coming on. It's nice, nice to see you all. Great. Hello. <laughs> Kath, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you you you've come back with a vengeance this year. So I know you, you had your your hip replacement back in December. Yeah. Um, you were a little bit nervous, kind of about it. I know you've spoken to a few people who have had yeah. a similar operation yeah. and, and surgery, should I say? But the last the last couple of competitions, you've been firing. Yeah. So I mean, you know, you must be so pleased with it with yeah. where you're at. I'm, I'm I'm gifted. I mean, I understand that. Um, this is an outcome that, in my wildest dreams, I daren't even consider. Well, I didn't. I was I was somewhere trying to just. Um, it kind of felt like I got a wave against me, and I was kind of trying to stay with my head above the wave because that's exactly how it felt. And I hadn't thought about that before, but that's exactly how it felt. I was in the unknown, and I also have a, a great sense of sort of. Um, What's the word for it? Um, if my if I know my body is going to be radically affected, then it makes me feel very humble and very frightened, really. If I'm being honest, and so I didn't dare look. I didn't look ahead. I never did, and I, I think I expressed that to you a few times, Joe. You know, when we were talking about goals and things like that. So I didn't do it because I felt that I was dealing with something far too precious in my life too push any further than I could you know um but yeah I got to um the nationals in um, Sheffield at the beginning of June and I just kept telling anybody look it's almost like it never happened in fact it's better than before mm. it happened and I, I just I wanted people to feel glad the way I felt glad and I wanted to also recognize you know the brilliant technology that was used to help me get to that point and then you know clearly i I followed everything and clearly, and I'm hopefully this is modest enough, but I'm a fit, strong person. And, um, you know, I can't emphasize how much when I, I hear what the doctors and nurses said to me, and that's what I'm kind of referring to now. I, um, I realized that they really understood that I was giving myself the best chance by being as fit and as strong. And I mean, we always, I'm always battling on about weight training, and you know that, but my God, he did it pull me through with, you know, with A. Plus, and I think that's exactly mm. what it did. Um, so thank you for asking, Joe, and I haven't had the chance to say that before. So um, it, it was a great opportunity to um, put perhaps something else in perspective. Definitely. And, and, and I, don't, I don't want to stop there either, because what I would like to ask you is, you know, I remember seeing you earlier this year at a competition. I think we were in. Um... Uh, Nottingham in Bingham yeah, um, yeah and I remember you sort of came away and said oh you know I swam all right but I wasn't wasn't too pleased and then fast forward a month and bang like yeah. you're on fire do you think it was just a case of times a healer or um, is there something in particular you were doing in your rehab that, that kind of helped? I can tell you what that is it's a great it's a great question thank you um I always uh I always try and get on with my 10 um swims for my decathlon and I was trying to get some of the absolute wishiest washiest events out of the way and honestly they are literally 
there were two bottom of the pile events. Uh, in fact, I did attended to do three of them, but when I did two and thought, you know what, that's good enough, I'll get me ten events. Um, I had to go and do the four hundred, um, and that was the one I talked about at Stockport. Um, but that's uh, you know for me that's a, a natural part of my swimming regime, so that's all right. But there I was doing a two hundred IM and a tw and a fifty meter. Uh, yeah, it was a fifty meter breaststroke, and it's honestly, the um. I mean, I can at least kick on breaststroke now because prior, prior to that, I really, um, I mean, I, I, I used to never kick on breaststroke because it was far too difficult with my hip condition and just mm -hmm. have a go in an IM or have a go in a in a swim. So at least, uh, but that's what you saw in Nottingham, me trying to do a couple of bottom of the pile events. And then obviously um, I, I, I ticked that box apart from having to pick up on the 400 spray, which... Fits in really well with training anyway, you know, just to emphasise a bit more endurance for, for a, a couple of sessions and you're there, aren't you, from somebody who, who will um, frequently go into to free. So, so you really did um, witness a, uh, what's the word for it? Well, I've said it enough times, you know, it was it was the ninth and 10th in the decathlon. Yeah events without shadow of a doubt <laughs> yeah. well, well, well well that's good to know and the most important thing is that, is that you're swimming well now and um yeah and swimming happy. well in time for the world which is great um so no that's brilliant and, and kyoko welcome to the podcast uh it's lovely to love to you. Lovely to nice to have you on as well um first question actually is that you swim for nottingham leander so i wonder if you know my coach mike brett mike brett yes 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 he is yes so yeah. um did he coach you when you were he younger or he coaches me now actually so um, so oh, he did, no. did coach me when i was younger because I, I i swam for belper marlins although he wasn't the head coach at the time he was kind of he came in and was assisting coach, and i knew there was a, a transition into him becoming head coach but that happened when i left and i've now returned to the club and he is very much the head coach and um he's fantastic he's I, I yes he crazy. is yes his menu is very interesting yeah very uh, encouraging and yeah challenging too yeah, no, for sure. Um, talk to us about how swimming has been going for you this year so far. Um, obviously, you're, you're gearing up for the Worlds. So have you done any events this year so far? And, and how are you generally feeling? Oh, to me? Sorry, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done. I'm, I swam with Kath twice, didn't we? And then one of the events that I did DQ for 50 Fly. Oh. And then Kath was next to me. And then... I think it was, it was uh, do you remember? Yes, I remember I that. Remember, yeah. yeah. I was very, very embarrassed. <laughs> I, I swam, I swam anyway. Okay. And the time was really brilliant, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because oh, I was relaxed, you know, nothing to lose. And then also I was in a bingham with you, Cass. And then we yeah. swam 200 IM together or 50 fly. I don't remember. One of the heats. It, and then you, uh, yeah, 200 IM, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm doing a 200 IM and 200 free, which are out of my comfort zone, but I'm trying to, you know, challenge myself for mm. the world. Yeah. yeah that's, that sounds fantastic. Uh, and, and just coming back to you as well, um, obviously the world's out in Japan. It's a big commitment. Do you, mm. you generally like to save yourself for the big ones? So, you know, nationals, Europeans, worlds, is that normally your go-to? Well, you know what? I am not really a competitive swimmer. I'm a water polo player and a rather. So I've been swimming for water polo. Yeah. And then I started competing in 2011 for swimming with uh, Nottingham Leander. But before, I just, no, I never competed. So this is something new to me. I've done Slovakia, Slovenia, um, yeah. European a few years ago. So that was my first international swimming competition. And then this is the world. Of course, we were going to play water polo, but um, we didn't raise a team. It wasn't enough players. Okay. So I decided to swim. So here I am going for swimming. <laughs> That's really interesting. God, so, so, so it's not even your main sport and here you are on the world stage. It's, uh, it's fantastic, isn't it? Well, you know, I am just, no, just participating, but it's very exciting. Yes. Yes, it's nice. My family is coming to support me. Oh, fantastic. No, I love that. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll be up first, Becky, because you're swimming the open water events. Um, so, I mean, have you checked out the venue for where you're swimming and, and like, what's the kind of, what's the lay of the land? 
I have. I've been watching. Um, so Nick Hope's been doing a lot of the journalism for yes. World Aquatics. So all the videos on Instagram have got you know Nick Nick's doing that. So the open water events have mm. have happened. So I've been watching the videos and getting really excited. And then showing other people, and then someone at work went, "It's in a harbour," and I was like, "And yeah. <laughs> it's like, but that's what it is." So there's a, it's a, a there's a few beaches I think in uh, Fukuoka, and they they've cordoned off one of the beaches completely for the whole of the championships. So it's Momochi Beach Park, mm. um, and so it looks really good. There's even a, a proper spectator stand mm -hmm. there. Um, I think it'll be laps rather because Rome last year was just one big loop. Um, and so right. I think there'll be a couple of laps. I, I think there'll be one K laps. So do three laps and it looks utterly fantastic. So I'm yeah, getting very excited. Yeah, it sounds brilliant. Do you know how close it is to the swimming pool? Is it kind of on, you know, on site as it were, or are you, are you actually quite far away? No, it's not. It's hard to judge on Google Maps, but I think it's it's not, um, it's a different part of Fukuoka, but I think it's quite easy to get around on public transport by the look of it. So you, you're sort of talking, I think it's a 15 minute walk once you get off the bus or the subway though. Um, Cause um, I think, yeah, it obviously the public transport stops and then you have to do this 15 minute walk down to the beach. So we'll factor that in. So yeah, no accreditations over by the, the main pool um so i'll have to do a bit of a recce out i think one day um and then sometimes it's just some easier to get a taxi isn't it there and then wander back on public transport so you're not stressing about anything so um but i think um kathy munro and i because we're both doing the 3k um and we're going to be out there early we said we'd meet up and maybe do a training session together and um, I think she's staying near the open water event, so we'll go and go and check it out. That sounds great. Do you get an opportunity to go in the water before your event starts? I don't think so. Um, it doesn't look like there's any open water training before the open water events, but then they've got training on at sort of a local pool, so you can't train in either of the two uh, competition venues beforehand but there's a, a a more local pool where you can do some training sessions um which is a shame because you know of open water it's nice to just get in and know kind of what you're dealing with i think the water temperature is going to be horrifically high mm. it's in the uh, late 20s which i was kind of expecting I'm... because i remember tokyo olympics they really, really struggled with the open water events, the 10K. Mm. They, they held it really, really early in the morning. And, mm. and I think, you know, like I think they, the 10K set off at six o'clock in the morning. And even then it was really, really hot. And I think a lot of the swimmers really struggled. They said it was like swimming in, um, you know, a jacuzzi. So, yeah, I think that would be the most challenging mm. aspect of it. Mm, it does sound does sound tough. Um, well, you mentioned the three K in there. Let's get down to business for us all. Um, so, so, what is everyone swimming? C Kath, talk us through your talk. Okay. Talk um, well, right, I've got quite a busy schedule. Um, I hadn't mentioned that I'm um, I'm joining forces with Spencer Swimming Club, um, which mm -hmm. I did back in 2019 and uh, for um, South Korea. And I do it because um, I go otherwise as a solo athlete for my uh, club and. Whilst they're very supportive, if you like, I'd, I'd prefer to have a network, which um, which is a, a wonderful thing. And, and also, I feel like I don't need a spare day while relays are going on. I want to be in the action sort of thing. Um, so to come back to your question, uh, I've got the 50 and the 100 freestyle and I've got the 50, 100 and 200 backstroke. And then I've got four relays. So I've got two mixed relays and two um, single women's relays 280 plus so that's my agenda for um for the swimming competition great and and what are your sort of hopes for those for those particular um, well i mean to be honest right that's an interesting question <laughs> it's a fascinating don't tell me you've not thought about um, it that's it sorry don't tell me you've not already thought about it oh yeah no no i've really thought i knew you'd ask <laughs> it was I, know, I think i think i'm gonna have to say medals um and i'm not gonna you know uh, that's and I mean I'm assuming when I say medals 
you know, it's one of the first three, as it were. But, I mean, it's a tall order. Um, it's a really tall order. Um, and uh, it, do you know what? So much of this depends who turns up. So mm. much of this depends on who turns up because um, I've been to a few now uh, international competitions and fortunately, uh, yeah, fortunately, I've got a, a good, a good uh, appraisal of who's out there. And uh, you know, it just depends whose name appears on the um, on the sheet because there's some absolutely amazing uh, swimmers in my age group. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So will they come? Um, and of course, I think the other thing about this is that um, it looks to me like the Japanese are very good at having yes, they very are. very good quality aged masters swimming. Yeah, they and uh, I've spotted them. Um, and I've not, I've not, in my opinion, uh, done much swimming against them in the previous World Championships. But I'm sure they'll yeah. be in force, very mm. force. So I, and I think it is the aged um, athlete because they do age so well in Japan. Um, mm. They've got a genetic, um, a, a genetic uh, propensity to to do that extremely well. I admire that with the Japanese, and um, so that's my uh, resume of my chances. Um, I still think meddling is a tall order, mm -hmm. uh, but I do think it very much depends who's in the mix, and I do think I have to take a great deal of regard of the Japanese themselves. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, they'll have to take a great deal of regard for you as well. Because <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joe. That is what, that is what <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, Keoko, okay, okay. what, what are you swimming, and, and what are your hopes for those, for those swimmers as well? Right, I am doing 200 I am, 200 free, 50 free and 50 fly. Oh. Interesting. So, um, yeah, so four, four heats. Interesting. And then, but interesting that you've gone for two 200s and then two 50s and you've missed out the hundreds. Oh, 100 is too painful, I think. <laughs> <laughs> It's, well, 200 is painful too. Well, 50 is painful even. You know, everything is painful, but <laughs> but I thought, you know, paying $25 for heat, I thought of, I can't do 400, but 200, yeah. Three minutes something, you know, I yeah. will enjoy swimming there. So, uh, but I'm not really, you know, I just want to finish it with mm -hmm. a smile. Yes. Or maybe, you know, a little bit out of breath. But um, yeah, I'm really looking kind of nervous, but looking forward to it. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. I was looking yeah. through the Swim England website recently and I looked at all of your best times and a lot mm -hmm. of your times have been set in quite recent times. So even over the last one, two, three years, yes. your best times. So are you going there thinking, do you know what, I want to get more best times? Yeah, I think so. Well, yeah, I studied. So I studied only 2011 competitive swimming. So um, I think I, I'm doing more and more technical things uh, to improve my time. Um, so I may have PB yeah, for um, one or two. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, that would be brilliant. What do you consider your strongest type of events then? Do you, do you think you're better at the 200s or better at the sprint, sprint events? Oh, well, I used to be better um, with the 50 meters, but now, well, ranking wise, UK ranking wise, I, I think I'm 200. Well, people don't, in my age, people don't really do 200 long course, for example. So uh, I might have, um, you know, better chances for those longer, longer ones. Yeah, no, sounds fantastic. Well, again, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll go there fit and firing and that's, and that's all that matters. <laughs> and the fact that you aim, you aim to, to finish with a smile on your face, that's, um, that's, yeah. that's basically what we should all aim for, isn't it? You yeah. know, at the end of the day. Um, Becky, you're, you've already mentioned you're doing the three k. Um, is that your one single race, or have you got a few more, a few more in the in the mix? No, I'm gonna. There's no fit. There's no fifteen hundred. So I'm gonna do the eight hundred, and then I'd normally do maybe the four hundred. But I, you know, I'm not very good at a four hundred. It's too. That's still a sprint to me. Um. So, but that was right at the end of the week, and so we didn't want to. I because the three k's you know, a good couple of days before the whole, the pool swimming starts. I didn't want to keep because all my family are coming out with me as well. So we're going to cut our losses after the 800. I'll have finished before anyone else starts. And then we're going to go to Tokyo. So yeah, just, just the 3K and the 800 I'm doing. Okay. 
You said there's no 1500. Um, I imagine you're quite disappointed about that. And do you know why there's no 1500? I think it's, there, there wasn't at Europeans last year either. I think um, I'm not, those are the only two international competitions that I've done. So I, I'm assuming it's that's a, a regular thing and it's probably mm. because it, it just takes too long to mm. to do. Yeah, Justin. And would you consider the 1500 your strongest event? Um, I still don't know what my strongest event is, really, because I've had a is it you massive... Enjoy um, I'm starting to enjoy the open water a lot more, I think. Mm. Um, and even 3K doesn't feel long enough anymore. The pool certainly doesn't mm. feel long enough anymore. So I think I'm starting to understand that I've got a real um sparkle for sort of much more endurance events so um I did all's water last last summer that's seven and a half miles um, wow. and I and I won my age group um so I'm probably going to branch out into that but my aims for going to Japan were what an adventure yeah it's great fun. The kids will absolutely love it. My son's utterly obsessed with Pokemon, and <laughs> and the kids have have figured out there's a Disneyland as well. So, um, we're nice. going to have to go to Disneyland when we go to Tokyo <laughs> one day. So, and I think there's other adventures on my horizon that I think my family are starting to just get a feel for the fact that we will be going. Our holidays will be revolved around some swimming adventures, and so. This is what this is. It's a swimming adventure. Mm -hmm. I think in open water, because the conditions are so different from one, you know, day to the next, you can't focus on a time. It's all about position. And like I've said, it just depends on who who turns up. Um, and then, um, you know, with the 800, it can't be as bad as what happened at Rome last year because I swam with a broken foot and torn ankle mm -hmm. ligament. So, oh, yeah. you know... If I do a PB, I'll just be utterly happy. So mm. sounds great. And a question I've got for you, actually, in terms of the three K, how do you train for that? Because I've I've done open water swimming before because I've done triathlons, and it's like a different sport. You know, you can't see in the water, so you're having to lift lift your chest up a lot. So I found it hard to get a rhythm. So what, what kind of I mean, unless you're going in open water maybe each week or something, how are you training for it? I think it's about experience and and starting to get a feel for different conditions so i think if you you know i've swam since being a, a kid so i've got that strong uh base there i work on my technique in the pool but i did a 3k a couple of weeks ago where it was horrendous. the conditions were horrendous and um, someone we were swimming with threw up halfway round. Uh, a lot of the little kids that were doing it afterwards didn't finish um but I was really proud of myself because I think I've swum in just so different conditions that I could adjust my technique to what I was dealing with. And there were 500, it was 500 meter lap. So we did, you know, six laps and no lap and no part of a lap going around the boy felt the same. Mm. So at no point did you ever feel like I'm just stretching out here. I'm doing nice long strokes. It was pure concentration the whole way through and I think when you swim an 800 or 1500 in the pool you can really switch off yes you know you're just into I generally count my stroke count um, and then so I'd count my stroke down a 50 or a 25 I know before I dive in how many strokes I should be doing per length and, and so that's what I concentrate on and making sure my left hand doesn't drift because that's what usually <laughs> happens when I get tired but you can kind of just get into a rhythm yeah. In open water, it's just the complete opposite. You've got to have your wits about you all the time and concentrate. You know, the start is just a, a, a mash of yeah. legs and arms yeah. and <laughs> feet. And you've kind of got to make a decision. Do I stick with everyone or do I just go back a little bit and have the space myself? And I generally, when I race, I'm on my own. I, you can't see who's behind you and I think there's usually people drafting off me but I generally like to because I kind of own my space mm. and then it is just about I do try to bilateral breathe because I think when you go in that distance you need to have a 
a, a rhythm and also it helps you sort of swim straight. But like the 3K I did the other week, I had to breathe every two. So I just made sure I changed which way I was breathing. The boys are not always that visible, especially when you're in the sea. It was really, really hard to spot at Rome. And if it's wavy, you can literally sight and there'd just be this wave in front of you. And so you've just wasted energy sighting to not <clears throat> see anything. <laughs> so you think, well, I'll go in a little bit. And then sometimes you're thinking, I've got to swim straight. But sometimes to swim straight, you have to swim wonky. So you kind of then starting to think is there a current is where, what's the tide doing so actually i i have to swim sort of for in a 45 degree angle in order to swim straight so it's a really it's real yeah mm. it's a real challenge and i think the only way you can develop that is just through experience yeah completely agree it's, it sounds really fascinating and, and mm. so, so much to think about when you when yeah, you yeah. Um, no <laughs> credit to you it sounds i'll be really really interested to see how you get on actually it'll be uh yeah it will, it will be fascinating indeed um kath that you know japan's a long long way to go um so, so the first question really is why did you decide to go to this world and then also how have you found the general organization for this event has it been easy enough to kind of okay um right so two parts to this one why did i decide why did this decide um it's it's, I mean, swimming's a huge part of my life. Not the only part, but a huge part of my life. Um, I, I mean, right, I, I have had a, a bit of a trauma this year, as we talked about, and also, you know, I'm not exactly a spring chicken. So, um, you know, the old, uh, the old story comes along. You know, you don't know how many more times. So there's that coming in here. Uh, very much so, actually. Um, a, a second part of this. Um, I did travel to Japan and, and had a wonderful experience in 1989. So mm. my knowledge of Japan as a tourist and all the main sites is is pretty full. Um, so that bit wasn't really um, that much of a consideration or virtually no part of the consideration. Um, and, you know, I'm going to have to say it. Um, I'm, I'm financially capable of, of doing this and making this decision. And I'm incredibly aware that um, that, that isn't an option uh, for so many excellent swimmers. Really, really aware of that. Um, but clearly, you know, me not going or, or feeling that that's uh, a reason to in any way limit my own participation is ridiculous. I understand that. But, I mean, it's a huge financial commitment. Huge. Oh, third reason. I have a female partner, as most people know, and she's I've got her blessing. Um, I haven't necessarily got the blessing of the dog or probably cry for a fortnight, um, <laughs> but I do have her blessing. She wants me to see, see me do um, anything that my heart desires, as it were. Um, and I am travelling on my own to go there because she's not a, a sports fan of, um, of swimming uh, and also would dread the idea of travelling quite so far. I think I've answered you. Oh, there was a second part. The second part was yeah. Just, just how, how have you found the organisation of it? Oh, also? Right, the organisation. I never, I never enjoy the organisation at all. Uh, but to be quite honest, it's no different from every other time. So the actual registration and that is a pretty much a nightmare. But fortunately, it's not such a bad nightmare as it has been um in previous attempts. So in other words, you do get a bit of experience on this, but it's horrible. And uh, you have to collect yourself. I have to collect myself ready to do it. And I know that I'm going to have to keep my um, my tempo, my, my nature uh, calm and considered and um, take some breaths. So the whole business is, is not very easy. Uh, the one thing I did feel was particularly positive this time and I used was being able to go back in and change my entry times. So the thing to do was to get your entry in, because they obviously closed the entry a little earlier, which I I can't remember happening before on mm. a Worlds. Um, so you had to be pretty nippy. And fortunately, the message got around fairly well. And so I put some times in and thought of, um, I decided to put everything I'd done at... Um, at um, Sheffield in the long course in because I did the five events there and thought, you know what, if you can 
get any better than them, you'll be well pleased, regardless of what your position is. You'll know that you've really got a season, you did, did better than Sheffield, and that will be something you can really flag up in your mind as being creditable. Um, so I think I've answered there, have I? <laughs> is that yeah. all right? Yeah, no, no, thank you very much. Um, it's the same question to you, Kyoko, really. So obviously mm -hmm. you're heading out there. You, you said you, you, your family's coming as well, which is fantastic. How have you, because, you know, the, just the thought, I, I mean, I'm going to Canada on holiday in September and just the thought of having to organise it all and there's loads of different parts you've got to consider. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess it can be quite overwhelming for some people. How have you found the organisation of this one? Well, organise it, um, I think they should have, um organize that you know facebook um official group a bit yeah. earlier okay they could uh, given a, a more information about event and everything and then also filling up you know um the number of entries uh, pretty quickly and then we could have um you know been told a uh -huh. little bit before um and then uh, one of the friends um the coming to japan she was going to swim but actually, it was too late to enter. So okay. she's coming, but she's not swimming. So uh -huh. that was a, a bit of a um, you know nightmare. Um, but um, other than that, I think it's um, a pretty good um, you know organization, and lots of uh, volunteers, um, Japanese volunteers, are doing a lot of work to make it um, successful event. So mm -hmm. um, I'm really looking forward to it. No, that no, yeah. sounds great. Have you been watching the, um, uh, well, sorry, I say have you been watching, actually, we're recording this quite early to when it's going to go out. So actually on Sunday, the uh, the pros do begin their version of the World Champs. Will, will okay. you be watching Kyoko just for some inspiration ahead of your ahead of your swims? Inspiration? Yes. Um, so say it again, the question. So, so, so will you be watching the professionals? Start yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. You're going to watch well, them actually, uh, well, I haven't watched her swimming. I've, I've been watching uh, water polo <laughs> matches, <laughs> but it's been really exciting. Yeah, Japanese, yeah. Um, but not swimming. Are they doing well? British, well, they start, British? they start on Sunday. They start on Sunday. So we'll see. Um, th this this isn't coming out for a few weeks yet. So we're recording this quite early, but they start on All Sunday. Right. And yeah, we'll see how they get on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, that's fantastic. And, and and Becky, you said you're taking the family. It sounds like you've got lots of uh, plans that's outside of swimming, which will be which will be great. Um, I think you mentioned earlier on that there there's a bit of a viewing gallery for the open water, which is fantastic. So does that mean that your family are going to be there cheering you on? Yes, and um, and they missed me um, at the Europeans because they just couldn't get a taxi down to the open water venue. Um, so, which was a real shame. Uh, I think it'll be much easier to get to to this one. Um, and my little one had chicken pox when we were in Rome as well, so she was utterly miserable. So it, she wasn't that easy to sort of uh, lug around either. So yeah, the kids are really excited. Um, Noah tells everyone at school that Mum's a champion swimmer, and um, so he and then he came and watched me do the three k the other week. Um, so he starts sort of really getting into it now, yeah. So I don't. Isabel is a little bit younger, my daughter, but um, I think she'll just get bored. But <laughs> uh, I, I guess as well, it's quite hard with uh, open water because it becomes even harder to actually recognise who you're trying to look for. Yeah, he and um, we had numbers on our hats the other weekend, so he he just knew which number to look for, and so it, he looked out for me. But I don't. I don't know how the hats will work for the open water. Um, they'll probably have numbers on as well. Um, but it'd be nice doing laps because then actually, you, you know, you should be able to see you coming round with each each lap. Um, and I just want to say thanks to Kyoko because um, she's done some Japanese sessions for us all um, <laughs> over Zoom. And um that's really got us in the mood and there was a lot that I was quite apprehensive about and, and Kyoko's given us some um, PowerPoint um, things that we can print out with phrases and sayings and, and what Japanese culture is like. So I'm feeling a little bit more confident that we can sort of Good. negotiate our way around. So thank you. They were really no, enjoyable. You're very welcome. My pleasure. That's, that's brilliant, Kyoko. Yeah, yeah, well done to you for, for going out, out of your way to do that. That's fantastic. You'll have helped a lot of people there. That's brilliant. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Um, just coming back to you, Becky, on the on the laps thing, you know, as somebody who's never really done an open water race specifically, I would imagine 
that 1K laps is better than doing one long loop, not just from the point of view of having a gallery of people watching you, but just, I don't know, psychologically, the feeling of like, well, you know, it's only like that rather than it being like, I can't even see the end. But then you've got to count. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what would you rather? Would you rather three 1K laps or would you rather a 3K lap? Um, I probably prefer one big lap. Okay. Because I remember when I did a 5K in May, it was six six laps, and I got to the end and clocked my time, um, and I thought, God, that's fast. And I was allowed to wear my Garmin, at least, and so I kind of went on my phone, and I know I checked I'd done the right number of laps. <laughs> I just swam really fast. <laughs> I, I there's really all like that niggly doubt. <laughs> I, I really like, do, do I call you Becky? Yeah, you or, can call me. Yeah. All right. Um, I'd really like to ask you a question at this point because I, I, I think this is fascinating. So for somebody who does 1,500 metres and you've got to count back and forwards, and, you know, and I'm imagining short course because, like, I do one every five years of 1,500 metres. Now, you're just saying, if I've got this right, that you really struggle with the laps, which could be three to five, I'm guessing, and you're a, you're a proponent of, of 1,500 metres and 800. So I just have to pick up on that because... Maybe it is more difficult, but over to you, Becky. <laughs> I think um, because you've got lap counters on an 800 and a 1500, there will be at least two episodes during both of those races where I think, what, where am I up to? I try not to look at the lap counters because that's wasted energy sticking your head up and doing it to sight. But there will be two occasions where I think I don't know where I am in this race at all. Um, but at least you've got the lap counters and and you can check. But in an open water swim, you don't. And you think, no. especially if you're doing like six laps, I'm like, am I on four? Am I on mm. five? And you mm. find yourself constantly, whilst trying to negotiate all the things that you've got to think about mm. in, an open, in open water going four, four, I'm on lap <laughs> four, 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 I'm <laughs> counting. And that's the only way I can do it because my mind wanders. Mm. And you've got that much to concentrate on. I really struggle. Something has to kind of go. And so sometimes that's how, what lap am I on? So I would yeah. prefer so to do one big you lap. <laughs> you mentioned the Garmin before. Are you allowed to wear a device like that? No, no but for some reason on this 5K we could do. Uh, yeah. But no, because you're not allowed to have any way of knowing sort of what pace you're going. Yeah, no, yeah, that's mm -hmm. fair enough. I, I, I think that probably makes makes sense actually. Um, Kath, um, well, I'm going to ask you all this question, but but start starting with you. Um, you, you mentioned already that you're sort of flying out there on your own, but you yeah. are swimming with another team. So, kind of, what are your social plans in the evening for dinners? Okay. Are you going to meet up with your teammates for dinners and stuff like that? Great question. Okay, um, I'll drop the bombshell now. I'm going. I'm going via Australia. Okay. Yeah. No. Wow. No. Yeah, no, I am going. I mean, I'll, I'm right. Okay, so the uh, the reason for that is that I, I wanted to get go somewhere to um, um, move on from jet lag. I promised myself that I wasn't going to go to a world champs in future and try and swim with jet lag. So, um, and I've already explained I did Japan in um, two thousand uh, in nineteen eighty nine. So I decided to go and see a a, a niece who and her daughter and husband in near Perth um, and the and so I'm going on Monday um, and I'll spend 10 days in Australia uh, before mm -hmm. flying up to um, back up to Japan and and by then the jet lag is 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 sorted so um, that now you're talking about me being on my own and the social side so um, yeah no I agree with um, I'm going to fly. I think I, I think I've worked it out. I've got 46 hours of flying time, which you know is like a great big cloud over the top of my head. And um, I'm really, I really just have, a, have to endure. I think mm -hmm. I, I can't think of another um, explanation for that one. And I've uh, kind of because I have done uh, this before. I have you know brought to my assistance everything I can possibly think of. Um, but it'll have to just be endured, and I really hate the prospect so uh, but I am um, um nobody's got a gun to my head and I've made this decision to do it um so uh so social and being on my own right um 
I've actually I've actually got um, a really good capacity to spend time on my own. Um, I'm a, um, I'm, I've got a history of being able to to do this effectively. Um, so again, it's not the first time I've ever done going to the other side of the world. And how long you got? Because I'll I can tell you uh, I can tell you stories. Okay. Um, and again, how long you got? So this is familiar territory for me. Not one that I do very often because I am in a partnership and I have got a family of two chickens, a cat, and a dog. So um, um, it's not something I do very much, or, or would wish to do very often. Actually, I'd say that. Now, um, as far as the social scene is concerned, um, I'm also I'm also fairly concerned, and and um, I've had plenty of help on this um, subject. But I'm fairly concerned about my diet because I'm a vegetarian and I actually know and people have tried to help me but I absolutely know that I'm pretty pretty much in a difficult spot with that one um so being in an Airbnb um will help me with eating yeah. considerably because most um supermarket I know I'll be able to um, n- n- negotiate that so the idea of sort of being able to meet for some of these wonderful foods in Japan isn't exactly going to Rev me up, um, but I have a secret weapon, all right? <laughs> no, I need to tell you about this because hopefully I'll get floods of people coming back to me now who are in. I'm I'm halfway between the main station and the main pool, and I have an Airbnb. So if anybody's in my area, please join me for a night down the. Um, I can I can I can um, take you to two breweries. I think. All right. Now, when I was in South Korea, and I'm imagining this culture is very similar because these two countries are so close. Um, in in their um, in their beer halls or, or beer beer places, <laughs> what to call them, pubs, um, they do have quite a nice selection of food that suits me. They're only me- meant to be accompanying beer drinking, but uh, you know, it's nuts and it's corn and it's vegetables, and and, and I know from my experience in Korea, that this kind of food is okay, um, particularly in a social situation. So I'm putting it out there for people to please contact me and say they'll meet me if they're desperate to find these pubs that I can show them. They're both breweries with a with an interesting... I, I love my beer. I think some people know that. So, um, so please um, sign up and come and join me. That sounds uh, and that's my way of answering the social requirement situation. No, Thanks I think that's fantastic. giving me the opportunity. Yeah, no, I, I can't believe people thought they were going out there to race. Turns out they're actually going out on the piss with calf. That's amazing. <laughs> well, well that, if that were to happen, um, it's a it's a new sport, isn't it? <laughs> we invented a new sport. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Um, same question to you, really, Kiriko. I know you're going out there with family. Um, have you got any? So, you, and obviously, you're competing for Nottingham Leander. Are there other people in Leander that are going to be there? And are you going to be sort of frequenting the local places? Well, actually, I'm not competing for Leander. I'm competing with uh, English Roses, which ah. is my water polo club, yes. Masters Club. So, English Roses are uh, one of the um, English Roses coming with me and then swim. The other one is not swimming anymore, but so. Um, so we are actually, how many? One, two, three, four, four people mm-hmm. um, staying in the same accommodation, like a hostel type. I found it quite early in March. So uh, got a good deal. And then it's walking distance to swimming pool. And then we could cook if we want to. But I think um, Fukuoka is a very good place to eat mm-hmm. um, lots of you know different things, yeah. um, especially noodle ramen is uh, one of the best in Japan, yeah. so uh, and then beer always nice, cold beer in the evening. So um, yeah, so so um, we are staying only three nights in Fukuoka actually, and then we are off to Hiroshima, Kyoto, and then um, Japan Alps Mountain. We are climbing a mountain, oh, and wow. then going to uh, Tokyo. Um, so swimming is just a little small part of our trip this time, but um, yeah, but uh, Cass, maybe we can just um, yeah. Hang out together. Oh, oh for you're beer. On my list. Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. <laughs> and then, Cass, you were going to set up a WhatsApp group, uh, aren't yeah, you, um, to keep in touch? Um, can I promote this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so what it is? Um, 
I, di- I didn't want to do a conflict on on um, Facebook, so we agreed that um, I would I would just take on the role of um, uh, of promoting those everybody from um, from from Britain who's swimming. Um, so put a, a nod up there. They're actually in whatever event they're in, and then actually um, their results with a little bit of extra flair wherever we can add it, and a few. Um, a few photographs. So we've got a website, uh, Brits in, um, in Japan, um, to do that. And uh, uh, not website, sorry, uh, Facebook page. And I've got uh, a team of four people now, including myself, who are all going to engage. Uh, Lindsay Galland and I did it when we were in Rome. And to be honest, I was rushed off my feet trying to get um, everything in place. Um, but it was good. It was a good egg to do it because it felt, uh, and I pr- promoted it like this, it felt like you've got your own um, support team with you. Um, and no matter where, you know, what, whatever happens in the results, we want to applaud you and, and congratulate you for your for your results so we want to see that we are there to support all all levels um and everybody who's actually competing um so it's a way to 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 just have your own cheerleading team hopefully um but as i say i've just um i'm just in the throes of finalizing um the rotor for the people who are helping me and yes we'll be uh, posting prior to the um first open water event uh, which I believe is on Wednesday the 2nd of August, and we'll be having Becky, yay, um, in there. So we'll be promoting all those of us from um, from the British uh, contingent who are in that open water, and we're all ready to go on that one, and uh, and then and then posting results. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's hopefully going to work very well with what you've been doing to promote the country of Japan and all the support with language and everything else that you've been doing for us all right so it just hopefully sits harmoniously by the side and um, hope that works sounds fantastic yeah nice one um final question then to you becky uh, it's much the same really you sort of already mentioned a couple of the plans you've got with your family but just reel off a little sort of like what's your i mean are you going out there for a week or two weeks and what, what will that look like so we're flying out on saturday the 29th and then we did Australia with the kids at Christmas because my sister lives out there. So we kind of know what they're like on a long haul flight. And it was really, really hard to get a flight down, a, a flight that did Fukuoka all in one go. Uh, so we're going to stay um, overnight and, and go. So we'll land in Fukuoka on the Monday and then the open waters on the Wednesday and then the 800s on the Saturday. So I think my kids are still young, so we'll just explore the local area. I think there is probably loads of great, places day trips wise um from Fukuoka but I just don't think we'll manage that um and then I've booked a bullet train from uh Fukuoka to Japan so it's five hours and I just thought that would be a great adventure with the kids and it goes uh, past Mount Fuji as well so um and then we'll spend the rest of the time um in Tokyo in arcades Pokemon shops Disneyland (laughs) Brilliant. That sounds, uh, no, that sounds fantastic. Um, look, I hope you all have a great time. I uh, wish you the very best of luck. Safe flight. One more thing from Kath? Yes, I've, I've got to come back to Becky again. Because uh, I picked up what happened in Rome with your damaged foot and the fact that you've got a a, a, a poorly child with you as well. And I, I'll tell you what, it can't be any worse for you, surely, than the experience you had on that last one. So I've got my fingers and my toes all crossed for you, Becky, that you have a... a an incident-free experience because certainly Rome didn't do you any favours. It really didn't. That's what I mean. It can't be any worse than that. And I was watching um, a documentary on Netflix, which was set in Rome, and um, I it <laughs> the drone camera passed over where I actually fell, oh. and and did, and broke my foot and tore my ankle ligaments, and I just got this wave of PTSD. <laughs> Um, I was like oh my god it brought back so many horrible memories um but yeah I I think you know I it's it's why we do it though isn't it you know we go and we swim and it should be fun and I you know I sat there and I was sorry when we got back to the apartment um my husband ran out for you know a bag of frozen peas because I was like I've I've really done some damage here this is not just a sprain And yeah. I felt sorry for myself all of about five minutes, had a little bit of a cry. Mm-hmm. And then when 
I just need to crack on. I'm a long distance swimmer. I don't need to kick. Mm. I've, you know, in the open water race, there was no dive. I just kind of let everyone go off and then just, you know, we didn't get mm. in the melee of things. Mm. Uh, there was no turns. The 800 meter was a little bit of a different story because uh, there were dives and there were turns and my, I was in a lot of pain and my head wasn't in it and I stopped twice. Um, but I remember saying to myself, a, a do not finish is going to be so, feel so much worse than a bad time. So I just cracked on. Okay. And I think, um, but at the end of the day, it was good fun. And the whole experience is just something magical. I mean, I think when you, you know, everything's still set up from the elite competition, isn't it? And it really is just a completely di different mm. atmosphere and feeling. And you feel like when you walk into the pool, it's going to feel like another level, isn't it? And so that's why that's why we're going. It doesn't matter about results, does it? It's about the fun and, and why, we, why we all swim at the end of the day, isn't it? Absolutely. No, listen, I wish you all the best. Um, Becky, I hope there are no fiascos this time. <laughs> yeah. Kath, I hope you find the pubs, um, you know, yeah, Kyoko, yeah. I, I hope you enjoy the swimming experience. And actually, I want to finish on something that Kyoko said earlier, actually, which is it's just making sure that you get to the end of the race with a smile on your face. And if you all do that, I'm sure you'll all have a great time. We will. Thank we you will. very much. Yeah, we will. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me.